and I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight here on Freedomizer Radio. And thanks again for giving Hugh Vale some love out there from tomorrowsharvest.com. And like I mentioned before, check out the website, get your free shipping, go ahead and get yourself some storable foods. You know you're going to need them anyway. You might as well buy them now when it's cheaper than what they will be in six to nine months from now. Anyway, joining us here is our guest tonight, uh, a former Champlain uh, of, uh, out in the Alaskan Pipeline. He's a big guest on George Norrie's Coast to Coast and Alex Jones and Rents, to name a few. Uh, Pastor Lindsey Williams, it is a pleasure having you join us tonight. Proof negative, I love the title that you use on your radio. I, I've thought about it ever since we talked on uh, off of the air the other day. And uh, I'd say that that's an excellent title for a talk show host. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you uh, you just uh, you were able to join us tonight. And oh, my, there's a lot privilege. of topics to cover, of course. Now, one, let me ask you: your uh, well, since I just had the Hugh Vale on, uh, the owner of TomorrowsHarvest.com. Uh, I was hoping that you could just give us a quick minute or two on on preparations because I know you have to get prepared physically with all your supplies, your your medications, your sanitaries, et cetera, but you also have to be prepared spiritually for what's about to take place. Well, we definitely need to be prepared, that's for sure, but we need to know what we're preparing for because right. that might also determine how we prepare and what we have uh, in store in relation to what's happening. So since I've got a lot of new friends out there tonight, and since this is the first opportunity I've had to be with you like this on your program, let me give just a brief background so that those who I have not met before will know where I'm coming from. Then they'll understand why I can make some of the drastic statements I'm going to make tonight. It really all began with me back in 1970. I went to Alaska as an aviation missionary, and that was about the time that they were announcing they were going to build the Trans-Alaska Oil Pipeline. Now, that's from America's big oil field up on the Arctic Ocean in northern Alaska, and they said that 25,000 pipeliners were going to converge on the state of Alaska to build that 800-mile, four-foot diameter pipe. And the first thing that came to my mind as a missionary 25,000 of the roughest, toughest, cussingest, drinkingest, honorest folks on the face of the earth, they must need some spiritual guidance. Now, that was the understatement of the year, but I went to Alaska Pipeline Service Company, and I said, don't you need a chaplain on the Trans-Alaska Oil Pipeline? At first, they laughed at me. They said, we never had a chaplain on any pipeline in the world. We wouldn't know what to do with you. Well, I kept going back and back and back. I guess persistence paid off, and finally they said, okay, We'll give you the northern seven work camps. They had work camps up and down that 800-mile pipeline about every 40 to 50 miles. They said, we'll give you the northern seven work camps, and you just go up there and see what you can do. Oh, I did. I'm quite sure they thought I wouldn't last very long. But about six months later, they came to me and said, Chaplain, we never realized the value of a chaplain on a pipeline before. They said, you're saving us thousands of dollars of counseling fees that we aren't having to pay. You're helping the atmosphere and the camps. They said, we've decided we'd like to make life a little easier for you up here. We want to give you executive status. I said, what is that? They said, well, go any place you'd like, see anything you'd like to see. And they said, uh, well, you can stay in executive dorms when you're at Prudhoe Bay at Arco Base. And they said, we'd like to invite you to sit in on our board meetings in an advisory capacity in order to help the relationship between management and labor. I didn't have the slightest idea who I was going to rub shoulders with. For three years' time, I lived with the elite of the world by their invitation. Now, I didn't see... And you had no idea. It It had to have been the providence of God because there is no way in this world that a little unknown, insignificant missionary flying airplanes out in the bush of Alaska could have ever lived with the elite of the world except by God's providence. And for three years' time, the people you hear about in the World Bank, the IMF, the top oil company officials of the world, they were not coming to my church. 
I was on their pipeline, invited to be so as a chaplain, and it changed my life. I'll never be the same person again. If someone had asked me before I went to the pipeline, Chaplain Williams, do you believe there's a group of people on the face of the earth who control the world? I would have said to them, who are you, a John Bircher? And I would have laughed at them. If someone had said to me three years later, after sitting across the dinner table from these people, living with them in the dorms at Prudhoe Bay, uh, spending hours and hours with them on their basis, not mine. If someone had said, Chaplain Williams, do you believe there's a group of people on the face of the earth who tell the president what to do, dictate to Congress what bills to pass, tell the Arabs on any given day what they're going to give them for a barrel of oil, and control the currencies of the world, I would have said, not only do I believe it, but I sat and listened to them talk about it. Now, that was 35 years ago. And there were some of those people that I became very good friends with merely because their respect for me giving three years of my life to be their chaplain. And some of them had never come in contact with someone such as myself, a minister of the gospel, probably in their lifetime. I mean, this is a different class of people altogether, ones that you would probably never rub shoulders with, much less get to talk with on their level and that was 35 years ago and over these years two of these individuals in particular have kept in touch with me on a regular basis and have told me things every time they have told me anything it has happened exactly as they said it was going to happen because everything is planned behind closed doors nothing happens by chance in the oil field in the price of gasoline in congress with the president Every bill that's passed, nothing happens by chance. It's all planned in advance. And behind closed doors, they know well in advance what they're going to do. So over these years, there's never been a time that they told me something that it didn't happen. I would go on radio talk shows all across America and say it, and people three to four months later when it happened exactly as I had said it would because of what they told me, People said, you're a prophet. I said, no, I'm not. I'm just an ordinary, everyday guy that puts on his britches every morning, just like any other man. But it just so happens that I know some of the elite who determine what's going to happen and what's going to take place. Now, let me give you a few examples of this. And some of those in your listening audience who might have heard me on other radio talk shows, you will recognize that I told this well in advance. There again. Let me say, I take no credit for this at all. It is by God's providence that I even had this knowledge and am allowed to give it out to you so that you can spare your household of heartaches. Now, I'm going to tell you in the course of the program tonight, everything that is going to happen between now and the end of 2012. I know I know it sounds startling. Uh, but, but it's happened exactly as they've said before, and I have no reason to believe that it won't happen exactly as they say it's going to happen in the future. Let me give a few examples of things that were told to me. I went on the air, and a few months later it came to pass. Back about three years ago, some of you heard this, because it went all over the Internet. It was on major, major right. radio talk shows everywhere. And I, I had a phone call one night. Uh, it was one of the elite. Uh, he was mad. He, he was very upset at me. Uh, I, I knew where the line was, and I knew if I ever crossed the line that uh, I would probably be contacted. And he was very upset at me. And he said, Chaplain, you've said too much. You've gone too far. And you're going to have to do this and this and this and this, or I'm going to do this, 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 and this. And what he said was not too pleasant. Uh, I knew that John F. Kennedy, the President of the United States of America, had argued with these people years ago, and you know how long he lasted as president. So there was no sense in the world in me thinking that I could buck them. And I said, well, what do you want me to do? He said, well, first of all, you've got to close down your website. Uh, He said, you're saying too much, you're telling too much, and things that we we can't have you say. And I said, well, what can I say? Well, he said, okay, I'll tell you what you can. Well, anyway, in the course of the conversation that night, This gentleman and I made up for a number of years of not having talked to each other, and he said, Chaplain, 
He said uh, the price of crude oil is going from $147 a barrel to $50 a barrel within the next two to three months. Now, many of you remember this. Remember back three years ago, you were paying $4 a gallon at the gas pump, and almost right. overnight it went down to $1.50 a gallon at the gas pump. And when this gentleman told me this, I knew that everything he had ever said over the past 35 years had happened exactly like he said. So I dared to risk my reputation and went on radio talk shows all across America, and I said the price of crude oil is going from $147 a barrel to $50 a barrel. I was laughed at. Some talk show hosts literally laughed at me over the air. In fact, I was on one show. I won't name the name of the show because you'd recognize the talk show host in a moment, a very prominent talk show host. And he had on with him that night a Wall Street analyst who was giving on his program what was going to happened in the stock market and so on, and he happened to be on the telephone at the same time I was and on the air, and when I said that price of crude oil was going from $147 a barrel to $50 a barrel, he just laughed and he said, Chaplin, you shouldn't say things like this. Now, you recognize this man, a very prominent man, and he said, you shouldn't say things like this. This would impact the world. I said, well, that's what I was told, sure enough. I mean, almost to the day, two months later, it went from $147 a barrel to $50 a barrel. My phone almost rang off. They said, how did you know this? You are a prophet. I said, no, I'm not. I was told it by the elite. I was just trying to help you. Now, at the same time, they told me that the price of crude oil was going to stay between 50 and $70 a barrel for two and one half years, and I said it. I said it right over the air. I said two and one half. It happened exactly as they had said it. The price of crude oil stayed between 50 and $70, $80 a barrel for two and a half years, and then it was about five months ago. And here again, I was on the phone with this individual, and they let me know what was going to happen. And I went over the air on radio sh shows all across this nation, and I said within four to five months there is going to be a crisis in the Middle East. Oh, talk to your hosts. By this time, they had begun to believe me. And, and a number of them said, oh, please, please, find out where it's going to be. So I went back. I called him on the phone. Uh, I have a phone number, personal phone number, two of these individuals. And I called him on the phone one day, and I said, is this crisis going to be in Iran? He said, no, chaplain. Everybody thought we were going to war with Iran. And, and he said, no, chaplain, I'm going to be with Iran. I said, where is this crisis going to be? He said, I can't tell you. I'm quite sure the reason he wouldn't tell me is because he knew I'd tell everybody. Uh, and, and I said, okay. And exactly four months later, just as he said, Egypt. You remember it? Only just about a weeks ago, then over to Libya, now Saudi Arabia, one of the uh, Middle East oil-producing nations right after the other. Well, then it came three weeks ago, and this is, is probably where we come down to what I, I feel that you must know tonight. About three weeks ago, I had a contact okay. from one of these individuals, and at the very top of the email that he sent me, he said, you better sit down, and he told me everything. Now, keep in mind one thing, though. These two individuals that have been keeping in touch with me over these 35 years, uh, both of them are retired now, but they still know everything that goes on behind closed doors. And about four months ago, one of these individuals, he was 80-something years of age, and he said to me one day, he said, Chaplain, I'm too old to care. Just tell them everything. Well, I did. And that's what I've been doing now for about four to five months. I've been going on shows everywhere telling everybody everything that's going to happen between now and the end of 2012. And then, about three weeks ago, just before I was on Coast to Coast AM, and then, of course, Alex Jones picked up on it, uh, this individual contacted me, and I know everything that's going to happen in the Middle East. And so I went on the air, and it was just a matter of days after the big conflict in Egypt and you saw the people, and then, of course, it went to Libya, and now it's spreading all across the Middle East. And I went on talk shows all across the country, and I said, I want to tell you what's going to happen. I want to tell you why they're doing it. I said, I want to tell you where this is going to 
affect you as an individual in America and everything that's going to take place from this point on, they have given it to me through the year 2012. Now, what is happening in the Middle East is not happening by chance. It was planned. It was planned well in advance. They told me, of course, they knew it a long time before I did, but they told me five months in advance that there was going to be a conflict in the Middle East. They would tell me where. They just said there's going to be one, and it happened in Egypt. Then this other gentleman, who is one of the other Mr. Exodus of my book, Energy Nine Crisis, told me why they're doing it and everything that's going to happen in their plan over this next year to a year and a half. So what it boils down to is the Muslim Brotherhood, which is a very devout Muslim. They believe in jihad. Uh, they are being financed by the elite of the world. I'll never forget one day. You have to understand this in order to understand how these people operate. The elite think so differently than what you and I do. They don't think in the same terms we think in at all. They think only in terms of power and control and manipulation. And the name of the game with them is control. And I remember one day up at Prudhoe Bay, I was riding in the vehicle with one of them, and I asked him the question. I said, you're building this pipeline, and the ecologists are literally costing you a fortune. Why don't you stop them? You're, you're powerful enough to do it. I've, I've listened to all the things that you've had to say. And he said, Chaplain, you have to understand something. He said, we support the Democrat Party, and we support the Republican Party. And he said, we give money to Greenpeace and Sierra Club and every one of them. He said, the reason we do it is so that when we get ready to, we can control them. He said, regardless of what a president gets in, we have given millions of dollars to both sides. We can control both presidents. It doesn't matter whether they're Democratic or Republican. Well, I learned how these people thought, what they did, how they manipulate people. And then I come down to today and realize that they, the elite of the world, are supporting the Muslim Brotherhood for a purpose. Now, in order to give this purpose, I'm going to have to go back and give a brief history lesson. Now, you bear okay. with me tonight. I have so much to say, I hardly know how to say it, but proof of negative, at any point you want to break in, please feel free to. I'll just oh, don't worry, I'm going to, but go ahead. Well, I need to go back away so that you understand why these people are doing this, and then where it's going to go for you. I must go all the way back, if I may, very quickly now. I'll do this very rapidly because I know time is short. I'll go all the way back to 1901, Beaumont, Texas, the first major oil fine on the face of the earth, the first blowout, you might say, was spindle top, and it went at about 200 feet in the air. That began Texaco, Shell, Standard Oil, and Chevron. The big four major oil companies had their beginning at that point. And crude oil's use as a major fuel had its beginning at that point. 1903, Henry Ford built his first assembly line automobile in America. And then Mercedes built their first assembly line automobile in Germany. Now, this point, American oil and the great industrialized south that we have today, and, and gasoline back in those days was 15 cents to 25 cents a gallon. <laughs> Just yeah. after that, oil was discovered in the Middle East. And this began it. And it, this, this is so interesting. As I used to sit and listen to these people talk about how they had manipulated all of this from the beginning, I, I would sit at times almost spellbound and listen to them by the hour or tell what they had done. Oil was discovered over the Middle East. Now, this was about 60 or 70 years ago. And keep in mind that the Arabs prior to that had been nothing but nomads riding camels, roaming around in the deserts. They didn't have the money to build their oil fields. And so when oil was discovered in the Middle East, the major oil companies that had now become quite wealthy in America, the Texaco Shell, Standard Oil, Chevron, and, of course, a few offshoots of these, they literally, and folks, this, this is so interesting how they did this, they literally divided up the Middle East, uh, country after country, and went to the Arabs and said, okay, you don't have the money to produce your oil fields. We will build your oil fields for you. Now, the reason I know this is because of the one gentleman who just recently passed away. He died about four months ago, 
and he used to sit and talk to me about this hour after hour. His name was Mr. Ken Fromm. I can use his name today. I couldn't right. back then. 